Today's video is all about getting back into street photography, because at some point in time, we all need to take a break, and that's okay. So most of you already know I've been taking a little bit of a break, uh, but I'm trying to get back into it. Um, and at the same time, I'm also trying to get back into making these YouTube videos uh, on a consistent basis, which to be honest is a lot harder to do. Um, I'm working on another video that I'm probably gonna have to scrap for like the fourth time. Um, but yeah, that's going great. Um, but I was able to go out and do some street photography for the first time in a very long time. Um, and it felt great actually. So you're gonna be seeing some footage and some pictures from that day in this video. Um, but I wanted to talk about this topic of getting back into the flow of things, getting back into street photography after, you know, life happens. And you know, not everyone has the ability to shoot street or take photos all the time, every day, or even every week, you know. Um, at some point in time, every photographer is going to experience a moment where they're not going to be taking pictures for a long period of time and they're gonna have to get back into it and I don't think that topic really gets talked about all too much but yeah I'm just gonna talk about some things that I've been trying to do to help me get back into the swing of things um, and hopefully this helps anyone who's currently in this situation too but before we begin I want to quickly thank my friends over at Skillshare for sponsoring this video if you don't know about Skillshare they're a massive online learning community where you can find just about any type of class on the topic that interests you that includes classes about street photography and running a successful YouTube channel one of my favorite classes on Skillshare is taught by Brooklyn-based photographer Andre Wagner and he is no stranger to creating interesting photography in his class, you get an inside look into an extremely talented photographer's process. And you know, that's something every photographer, no matter your level of expertise, you can learn from that. I like to look at learning as investing on yourself, so why not learn some more for free? The first 1,000 of you to use the link in the description, you'll get a free one month trial to Skillshare Premium. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Bet you weren't expecting that transition. <laughs> Oh, okay, so I just lost my train of thought. Okay, so you've probably heard me or other people talk about, you know, warming up uh, when it comes to street photography. You know, when you, when you go out, start your day shooting, you kind of have to warm up to things, right? When you take a break from street photography for a long period of time and you're just getting back into it, it's like your first day shooting, you kind of have to warm up, but it's a long, longer period of warming up, I guess you could say. You sort of have to go through this process of rewiring your brain to think and observe like a street photographer again. And that takes a little bit of time. Take my jacket off real quick. Uh, and I'm supposed to be wearing these headphones. So when I went out to shoot on this day, I made it a point to go at it with little to no expectations. I told myself, you know, if I came away with one photo I was happy about, um, I'd consider that a success it, to be a, a good day. It's good to shoot with no expectations. Um, sometimes I think this is actually the best way to approach street photography every time you go to shoot because, you know, realistically, you can't expect something great is going to happen every single time you're out shooting. That's just not how it works. If you do that, you'll just be left disappointed more than half the time. At the same time, you shouldn't be going out expecting your photos to be terrible because then maybe that will actually happen and we don't want that. I think it's more of a mental trick on the brain. You're sort of expecting something good, but then at the same time you're telling yourself, no, I'm not expecting anything. Doesn't sound that great when I explain it that way, um, but you know what I mean. The whole point is to make the process of getting back into shooting street photography less frustrating. And if you go at it with that approach, I think you'll be less frustrated because you're okay with the fact that, you know, your photos are not all too great. 
by the way, I'm actually editing these photos in Capture One. Um, at the time of this video that I'm recording this, um, I think I have like three days left in my 30 day trial. I'm trying to get out of Adobe, not trying, I already did. I already canceled my subscription. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get out of the, the subscription model of editing your photos. It's just, it feels weird to have to pay monthly to edit my photos, you know? So I think there's a Black Friday deal on Capture One 21 and I'm gonna jump on that. Yeah, so far the experience has been really great and yeah, maybe there will be a future video on Capture One on this channel, we'll see. Okay, so, you know, it's good to sometimes have no expectations when you're shooting, but we've all been in that situation where maybe we were out shooting for, you know, at least an hour or so, and nothing's clicking. Like, literally nothing. Like, you haven't clicked your shutter once yet. Nothing in your vicinity seems of any interest to you, and, you know, that's really frustrating. And I've definitely been there before, and... It sucks. Most of the time it ends with me just taking myself out for a sad lunch. A great way to, you know, I wouldn't say avoid that, but maybe lower the chances of that happening to you, um, that's to shoot in an area that you rarely shoot in. Maybe it's a spot you've shot once in before, you didn't think it was all too great of a spot to shoot in, so you've never really shot there ever since. Or maybe it's a place you've never shot in before and you just have this preconceived idea about the place that it's a terrible place to do street photography. Go to that place and shoot there. And remember to go at it with little to no expectations. That's an important key. Um, but the point is, you know, you'll be surprised how powerful a new or lesser known place can be for drawing inspiration out of you. It puts you in a much less comfortable position, I think, and you know, a lot of times when you're in an uncomfortable position that forces growth out of you and so maybe it forces you to look a little bit harder for compositions for for good images and it gets you thinking more and i sort of did this to start my day off here in this video i don't really shoot in the back bay area all too much actually but i'm trying to change that not to get all cliche on you guys, but you know, photography, it's really all about trying to better understand the setting or place that you're in, or at least that's how I look at it. If you keep shooting in a place that you're really used to, you really know the ins and outs of that place, you don't have that same novelty. And you know, that can lead you to feeling really uninspired and not wanting to go out and shoot again for a long time after that. And we don't wanna feel that way when we're just trying to get back into street photography again. So I really highly suggest, um, you know, if it's the first day you're going out to shoot in a long time, go to a place you haven't shot in before. And, you know, hopefully it brings some inspiration to you. Um, I think it helps me personally. And, you know, the whole goal is to get back into that inspired state. So, you know, something like that can really help you. I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, thank you guys so much for sticking to the end of this video and just for sticking with me this long. Um, in general, your support for me on this channel means everything to me, so thank you guys. Okay, until next time, see you guys.